There's two things I want to do in the next 15 minutes. The one, oh, first of all, I want to clap. The first thing I want to do is start spitting out vocabulary. Sometimes when you learn something new, the first thing you have to do is learn the vocabulary. And in computers, man, the vocabulary is weird. And part of that is to keep the newbies out. You know, if you've ever been in a clique in grade school, you make up words that nobody else understands. And part of that is so you can tell, is he in the club or is he out of the club? So one of the things you do in a class like this is you learn all the secret language so that you can at least act like you're in the club, even if you're not yet. The other thing is some of these things have real reasons for the names they choose. And so we have to get those names right. Because we're talking about abstract concepts. And you could name them anything. You could say, I want to put a jello here and I have a kumquat over here. Or you could say, I want a tuple and I want a record here. Doesn't matter as long as everybody uses the same words. So I'm going to use a set of words. You'll find this set of words in your materials. You'll find them on your quizzes and your exams. Let's go through it. The other thing I want to do to start out on is describe two kinds of jobs. Let's look at the database subject area from two angles. One is we'll just get started on the vocabulary. Second, let's take a look at the two types of jobs that you typically run into. And then we're going to imitate the behavior of one of those jobs. So the two jobs are a DBA Business Systems Analysis and a DBA. Business Systems Analysis and Analysis. And this one is a data base. area, you can get pretty good money. You can get really good money. Um, I know people who are doing this who charge 250 bucks an hour um, and up. Um, it takes you a while to get there. You have to put in your chops. You have to know a lot of stuff. You have to be an expert. But you get paid really well. Um, Business system analysis, same thing. If you're good at what you're doing here, you can be earning upwards of 90 to 100,000 bucks a year. Um, two types of job are a little bit different in their focus. The systems analysis, her job is to have one foot in the technology and one foot in the business, obviously, business system. So, for example, if you're creating a database for a flower farm, for an, I, you know, flower farms are incredibly high-tech these days. They are managing all sorts of different varieties. They are on a calendar. They have to get their flowers to the, the uh, streets of New York on Mother's Day morning. I have a friend who lives down in Aurora. He does tulips. And his whole reason for being is to make sure those tulips are ready to bloom on Mother's Day in New York City. And he has an incredible amount of database and IT work that is monitoring his greenhouses, that is checking gasoline prices, that is doing all sorts of interesting stuff so that a year ahead of time he knows what kind of tulips he should be planting. So, to do a computer system for this gentleman, you have to know tulips pretty good. You have to know airlines pretty good, because that's how he ships. You have to know a lot of stuff about his business. The other side of it is you need to be able to translate all of that information about his business into technology, because he doesn't care. He does tulips. You're the guy who actually turns that into a database that he can use on his phone, and he knows that his tulips have arrived on the streets of New York. So I find this business systems analysis role to be an amazingly entertaining job. I've done this in a couple of different positions. You 
because you get to learn other people's business. You get to stick your nose in other people's businesses, and you learn how they work. And then you do what you always want to do, which is translate into some computer system. That's constant from one to the next. And a good business systems analyst will be able to move from one database engine to another. Like if they say, well, we use Oracle here, you say, okay, that's cool. I can work with Oracle. Oh, we we'll use Microsoft here. You say, yeah, it's cool. I know how to work with Microsoft. You're the bridge between that business and the database technology. Now, in contrast, a database admin wants that database to run as fast as possible and as efficiently as possible and is very deep into the technology. So you'll find that the DBAs tend to specialize in a particular vendor or in a particular type of deployment. So for example, if you're doing the database for Facebook or for Google, these are gigantic databases. They're literally running on hundreds of thousands, if not a million machines. And that database is at the cutting edge of technology. Um, you, could have a, you could have an amazing career just making databases run fast. The Google query, when you do a Google search, it has to come back in a tenth of a second or less. Well, you're not going to stick around. And think about it. Those DBAs have figured out a way to bring the entire web to you in a tenth of a second. And they do it by talking to hundreds of thousands of machines all at once. It's a pretty cool thing. It's pretty wonky. Not everybody's into the uh, technology that deep. Not everybody needs to be. So, two different types of careers. One, if you're interested in all sorts of different kinds of people and you want to learn different things and you want to help them out and make their businesses run faster and more efficiently, a systems analyst job is for you. If you really love technology, you love programming, you love getting deep into machines, you like taking things apart, putting them back together, making them run better, um, DBA is for you. My son is a, uh, he's two things, he's a car mechanic, what they call him technology. Technicians, um, and he's a race car driver. So there's two things he likes doing. Well, really, there's one thing he likes doing. He likes going fast. He just loves going fast. And he uses this skill, his technical skill, to go faster and faster. So in fact, right now his race car is in our garage, and he is pulling every piece of that race car out that weighs anything. So he's in fact pulling the wiring. He long ago got rid of the dashboard and was pulling the wiring harness out of the dashboard. He doesn't so much care how the dang thing's designed. He doesn't want to design cars. He wants the car that he's got to go faster. So he's got that kind of an attitude, and it's a very valuable attitude. Again, people pay a lot of money for that kind of person. I'm not that kind of person at all. I like knowing that. When I, in fact, I could be a car salesman, but I'd really like to do rather is, is, is uh, if, I could, if I could design a car for every customer that was perfect for that customer, I would love doing that. I'd love knowing that the car that person is driving is exactly the car they want. So I'm this kind of person. You know, I sometimes have interesting conversations because there's a gulf there. You know, I'm like, well, why is it like this? And he says, I don't care. I said, is that what you want? He says, as long as it goes fast, I don't care what it looks like. His car is three different shades of yellow. Oh, God. <laughs> Jeez. What the heck? It looks like a terrible movie. I'll stop now. Okay. So, we're going to take on the role of a business systems analysis. We are going to start with a simple little project um, of personal information management. Somebody's little black book, somebody's contact address book. And currently, this address book is being stored in an Excel spreadsheet. And our hypothetical customer is storing this silly little address book in an Excel spreadsheet. Now, what does a business systems analyst do? They interview people. They interview people. They learn for a living. They go in and they find out, what do you do? How does that work? They look for nouns. They look for nouns. They look for objects. So, 
the first thing we're going to ask is, well, what are we tracking here? What are we saving? Well, we're looking for people. Our first vocabulary word is entity. Entity. An entity is a thing. It's a noun. It's just something. It's the most general way we can think about anything. So in a school, what are the entities? Well, we got students. What's another entity in a school? Teachers. Teachers. What's another entity in a school? What's a thing that a school would want to keep track of? Classes. Classes. Not only classes, like CS, CIS 121, but sections of those classes. What's another thing a school wants to keep track of? Tuition. Yeah. Your balance, have you paid your tuition? Has the school as a whole made a profit this year? It's a business outcome. What's another thing the school wants to track? Grades. Grades. Grades are individual. You have a grade, you have a grade, you have a grade. I have a grade, I have a rating. Uh, we look at our, our overall grades. We have standards, that sort of thing. Grades are a big thing. All of these are entities. And as a business systems analysis, you start looking for, well, what are the things you want to track? You're not so much interested, although we're very deeply interested in each individual student. But as a, a systems analyst, what I'm looking for are what are the pieces? There's this thing called a student. I'm not so much interested in each individual student as I am in the concept of student. I'm not so much interested in each individual class. I want to build a system that can handle any sort of class. Uh, a woodworking class as well as a philosophy class. My system has to think about these things that we do in these rooms and in some general sense. The next thing that I'm looking for as a business systems analysis is relationships. I'm not talking about relationships in terms of the okay cupid kind of relationship. I'm thinking about how do things fit together. And there's a real specific language that we use. Real simple language. Like a class has students. Okay, well, class has students, but we go a little bit further, not much further, but we go a little bit further. Is that class has one or many students? It has, it's a verb, one or many, a cardinality, a cardinality. Now this is one of those words that you just got to take it and memorize it. If you didn't know this word before, and this is your introduction to it, lucky you. If you have had a lot of math in the past, you'll have seen this in other contexts, lucky you. Cardinality means what? How many? Wait, cardinal direction? Does that have to do with anything? Oh yeah, the cardinal points. Yeah. No. Okay. It's, it's the, it's, it's, yeah. No. This is just how many. Another thing you're going to be looking for is optionality. Optionality. So what's, what's something that's optional? Do you have to take the prerequisites for this course? Oh, yes. Okay, now there's prerequisites, and then there's, what is that other one called? Recommended? Recommendation. Yeah. So a class has zero, zero, or many. Uh, it's not the requisite. What's it called? Required? Recommendation. Recommended classes. Recommended. So here, because I'm saying zero, it means that recommendation is optional. So a business systems analysis sits down with the client and says, okay, what is this thing we're building? And the guy says, well, I want a database that keeps track of my school. And you say, great, what are the things in your school? And they, and they lay it out for you. Classes, students, sections, uh, <coughs> grades. These are the entities. I find all of the things that I want to keep track of. And then I go through and I find all the relationships. Well, what does a class have? 
well, a class has one or more students. If there are no students signed up for class, we cancel it, and it no longer exists. Well, there's a reciprocal relationship. There's a backward relationship where a student um, enrolls Now, you, can, can you be a student at PCC if you're not enrolled for this quarter? Do you, you still keep your status or do you lose your status as a student? Anyone know? I was signed up for PCC before I ever started going there. So, like two semesters worth of not doing anything, not paying any money. Okay, so this is the kind of conversation you have. The guy says, Well, what exactly are we talking about? And you write it down and says, What are many classes? And someone says, Oh, no, that's not exactly right. Because I can be a student. I can be in the database, and I, can, and I don't have to be taking classes. So this becomes zero on many classes. That's the kind of conversation a business systems analyst has with the client. What are we talking about here? Now, I'm going to write down something. Is that exactly what we're talking about? And the client says, nah, no, that's close, but that's not quite. Change it to this. And what you end up with are a set of these very simple statements. You are describing the system. These are called business rules. In our class, we're going to write down the business rules for that really simple little contact database, the address book from our client. We don't have the client to interview. All we've got is that Excel spreadsheet. That's all we've got. So we're going to kind of simulate being an systems analyst by trying to pull as much information out of that spreadsheet as possible. And you're going to have to make some stuff up, and you're going to have to pay close attention. And on Thursday, we'll talk about the pitfalls of that. And I'll say it now, and I'll say it again Thursday. You would think that everybody has an address. I mean, even a homeless person has a great. Even a homeless person who is still alive has a geophysical coordinate where they exist in space. So you would think that a reasonable rule would be people have an address. Each person has one address. You might think, well, if they're rich, they might actually have a summer home. So the, the thing might be people have one or more addresses. But that's not what the data says. When you look at your assignment, you'll be given a spreadsheet, and, they'll, and I'll ask you, what are the business rules for this spreadsheet? What are the entities? What are the business rules? And you will find that some people don't have addresses. How does that happen? So that's the key. When you're a business system analyst, your job is not, to, is not to make stuff up and think to yourself, well, how would I do this? Your job is to find out how are they actually doing this? How are they actually keeping track of their friends? How are they actually running the school? The school? How are they actually running that tulip farm? I don't really care. I want to know how it's actually happening. And I'm going to run, write down a set of rules. And the rules always come in pairs. They always come in pairs. And I'm going to define as many of them as I can. In your assignment, I ask for six. If you want full points for the assignment, you've got to give me six. And in fact, I think I already gave you three. Two. Two. It is not difficult. However, everybody makes mistakes. And it's likely one or two of your rules will have some problem with it. If you turn in your assignment early, I can say, well, this, this rule has a problem. This rule. But another strategy to make sure you get six good ones is to give me eight of them. Or give me ten. I'm sure I can find six good ones in there. And then you get full points. I think when I did this assignment the first time, I found 30 some odd business rules, which fully describe how this thing works. On Thursday, we'll go deeper into this. We'll learn more vocabulary terms, and we'll learn a diagramming notation that will allow you to draw a picture. Because pictures are always easier to understand than a lot of time. That's it.
please be careful driving home. And uh, if you can't, if we're still in the uh, winter wonderland on Thursday and you can't make it in, send me a little email. Uh, the sign-up sheet made it to everybody. Thank you very much for showing up. Thanks for staying right there. Always a pleasure.